Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we will take a look at Azure RBAC. RBAC is nothing but role-based access control. We haven't seen this uh, in our entire any of the Azure series, but this is one of the important thing that you should know as a Azure developer, or if you're getting into Azure, you should definitely know what does this RBAC means. So without delay, come, let's get started. All right, so what is Azure RBAC? RBAC stands for Role-Based Access Control. Basically, Azure Role-Based Access Control will help you manage who has access to Azure resources and what they can do with those resources and, and what areas they have access to. So there are three things that will come into picture when you create an RBAC or use an RBAC, okay? And also, Azure RBAC is an authorization system built on Azure Resource Manager so that it provides fine-grained access management to the Azure resources. So basically, uh, in understanding perspective, right, so uh, there are everything that is there in the Azure is called resources, right? And um, what happens is you have to always give a least privileged access to anyone to access the resource. Or in other words, even for a resource accessing another resource, there should be only least privileges should be given. So if you still say you don't understand, so basically consider a user, okay? If a user has all type of access, he can he or she can go and delete or screw up the complete, uh, you know, subscription or anything that ha a disaster can happen. Similarly, let's say an Azure resource is accessing another Azure resource uh, for doing some, some operation. It should have only what it is supposed to have access, okay? If it is trying to read a... Uh, from a storage account, it should have only read access to the storage account, not the delete access or write operation so that it goes and, you know, screws up the data which is there in the storage. So that's what uh, is all. So basically, you can fine grain your access level and that can be achieved only by the Azure RBAC. So if you ask me what I can do with the Azure RBAC, these are the examples, right? So like, for example, the first one, right? allow one user to manage a virtual machine in a subscription and another user to manage virtual networks. The both are users who belong to the Azure, but they have different set of roles which are permitting only certain set of operations, right? That's, that's one of the example. Let's say uh, you allow a DBA group to manage SQL database in a subscription, which means they are DBA administrators, they will manage the SQL database, but they don't manage any other resource in the subscription. Right, so, so that you can give such a high role, uh, but only for a specific resource, which is in this case SQL database. Another example is allowing a user to manage all resources in a resource group, such as virtual machines, website, and subnet, like an admin privilege, where you you administer or you give access to a particular resource group, but if you have n number of resources allocated within the resource group, you still have access to all of the resources. Right? So those kind of things also you can do. And uh, you can also allow an application to access all resource inside a resource group. In our case, registering an application in AD and then allowing the application to access the resource. In, in a good example, let's say a resource called uh, Key Vault. You can register an application in AD and you give permission for that application to access or do any operation on the key vault, you can do that. That's one of the examples. So how this Azure RBAC works, right? The way you control access to the resource using this Azure RBAC is to assign the Azure role itself. So it's it's how the permissions are enforced, right? This is a key concept that you definitely need to understand. A role assignment consists of three elements, okay? It could be a security principle, a role definition and scope. The three things has to be there on a role uh, assignment. Like we will see what are those three things. First one, security principle. Like for understanding, you go with who. Who, who means security principle. Security principle can be of four types. User, ourself, a group in which a user resides, right? A group and a service principle and the managed identity. Now, if you wanted to know what all these four, I will explain it in a different video, but uh, in simplest term, user is like us. User, a group of user putting into a group is called a group. Service principle is, uh, again, uh, a new identity, which is, um, which is managed by the Azure, and that is something that Azure knows what to do, how to maintain it. 
right for accessing the resource managed identity is something that we create we manage it basically manage identity also it's a representation of uh, accessing a resource okay so now this is called security principle and you you remember this as who okay the first one second one what role definition comes into picture if you look at the diagram right role definition has these things you have inbuilt roles like owner contributor reader etc etc and then that's all called inbuilt and you can also have your custom roles uh, we will uh, down the slides we will go through those so you can also create your custom roles like and if you define the role like if you look at the definition of the role you will see these things in the right side action not action data action and you know not data action assignable scope so we'll go through every one of these properties but stay with me basically it has a definition of what you have access what you don't have access those kind of definition right that is what comes under the action and not action and data action not data action okay now that is what i've been explaining here and also assignable scope is nothing but uh, the third one, Let, let's go back and see what is the third one, right? So role definition, the second one. So who, what, and then the next one is where. Okay, those are the three things that you should understand. Where means at what level you have access. Now, if you consider the scope, the diagram, uh, if you are an individual user who are uh, logging into the Azure portal, what all you know, probably know as of now, if you have not studied about AZ104 and all, what you know is you have a subscription right do you know that you have more you can have more than one subscription a subscription is a different building yes so all the subscription now comes under one management group that's the root level group okay under that there's a subscription under subscription only you will be able to create a resource group you have you seen when you create any of the resource you will end up selecting the subscription first followed by the resource group then only you will configure all the resource details right so that's how the hierarchy is management group subscription resource group followed by the resource now this is what called var so you will define in assignable score that at what level this role belongs to a particular role belongs to a resource group which means any resource that come under the resource group so any resource that come under the resource group will have the access to the same thing like whatever the role definition is that it will have the complete access let's consider this uh, simplest uh, custom role definition right so what do we have here we have a definition and it says a name of the role and then a description of the role and then followed by a bunch of properties important properties action not action data action not data action and assignable score okay so in action we are saying it has access to start and restart a virtual machine okay not action means they cannot delete the virtual machine so how it works is it will go and check what do you have access okay start and restart fine now in not action it has explicit denial so not action means explicit denial even if you have access something defined in the action and if you have an explicit denial on the not action that will take precedence which means it will do ask you to do restart start everything of the virtual machine but it won't allow you to delete okay now let's go back and see action means users assigned this custom role can perform action start and restart on virtual machine not action means they cannot delete on a storage account they cannot let's call explicit denial okay now the next one is data action and not data action basically anything that is related to data right that's called data action. So in this case, consider this. What are we doing? We have write permission on a containers at the blob service. So here, user assigns this role can perform a data action write on a blob container within the storage account. Okay, only only within the storage account. They don't have write access to anything else uh, on the resources. Similarly, not data action is an explicit denial operation where they cannot delete the storage account. Okay, they cannot delete in this case, it's a key vault. They cannot delete the key vault. That's explicit denial. Similarly, assignable scope is, we are saying this role is assignable to this subscription ID and also to this resource group, to a particular resource group, right? That's what this is saying. So let's understand role assignments, right? So if you look at the diagram, role assignment is a process of attaching a role 
definition to a user or a group or a service principle or manager entity. This is nothing but the first one we saw, right? The first one, the service principle, right? security principle. Let's call it the first one. And then we also say what purpose and at what level. And the diagram itself will explain you, right? Uh, we have a security principle and then we have uh, these assignments. So basically we have something called marketing group and then uh, we have the pharma sales resource group. So let's understand this, right? So here basically there is a marketing group and what we are doing is we are assigning this marketing group can as can have access to this pharma sales resource group, which means um, this pharma sales resource group might have more than one resource. So this marketing group people, right? People who are put into this marketing group uh, can have access to this pharma uh, sales resource group according to the scope that was defined. That's what uh, this role assignment is all about and uh, if you ever wonder how this uh, grouping of role will occur right? so role assignments are basically transitive for groups which means that if a user is a member of a group and that group is a member of another group that has a role assignment then the user has the permission in the role assignment automatically right so if you look at the diagram itself marketing group under which there's another group called a design group and if a user was put into that design group, but the design group is then com coming under the marketing group, then they also automatically have pharma sales resource group access as a contributor access. That's what this diagram is all representing. So you should know it's it's that's how you know group works. How about multiple role assignments? So in this scenario, if you see uh, one user or a particular like you know, entity, the, the security principal has access to different different roles. Right. Basically, what Azure will do is Azure will actually combine everything and then based on what access you have and what explicit denial you have, it determines exactly what is the rest of your permission. All right. So that's how it works. So if one role is giving you access and another role uh, actually have an explicit denial on the same concept, explicit denial will win. You will still have least access privileges. Right. That's very important. And it's safe for that as well. Okay, so look at this, right? This is very important one, right? So how this Azure or back determines if a user has access to the resource? If you look at this uh, screenshot where the data has been uh, put, basically it, it subtracts the action minus not action that will have the effective permission. Similarly for data, data action minus not data action, right? So the not data action is what will will take out whatever you have access. Like if, if you have explicit denial that you should not tell it, you will be you cannot delete a particular resource, right? That's how it works. And this is just a, a representation of how the flow works. Like, you know, the condition base, it starts from assuming that you don't have any access. It goes and pulls up all the records of your role. Uh, and then, you know, it's all stored globally, which we will see in the next slide. Basically, it gets everything. It determines uh, what you have, what you don't have. And then based on that, it will finally tell you whether you have access or not. So where is this, uh, you know, our back stored? If, if someone asks you in this interview questions, right? Uh, basically, this is stored at the global level so that it is applicable for all the subscription and everything. Um, you know, that's why this is stored at the global level. You can say this role definition, role assignment, denial assignments are stored globally to ensure that you have access to the resource regardless of the region you created the resource. It's very important. I already said why it is stored globally. So Azure needs to know, you know, irrespective of which region you you are belongs to, you belongs to, right? It it needs to know what access you have. So that's why it is stored globally. All right. Other important concepts. Uh, this is all for your reference. Basically, in the initial video itself, I said the least privilege is the best one, right? Only grant access to the user that is really required. You don't need to give more access to a particular user or any resources so that, uh, you know, it will end up in the dangerous place, right? So the, this screenshot will tell you uh, how how the, the uh, access are given at a different scope, right? So the left side, whatever is here is called scope and this is roles and this is like, to whom we are giving. So like I said, like role as assign the roles to the group, not to the user. Why? If you have five users, one role, which does a particular uh, set of uh, action, like the permission, you don't need to go and assign that role to every user. It's not good. Instead, you create a group, assign the role to the group, and you put the user into the group. When they are leaving, you take them out of the group. That's it. Right, whether they're leaving or you, they no, they no longer have access to that uh, set of operation. 
you take them out of the group that's how organization does it and that's how ashur also is recommending it all right i hope uh, you understand this all back and in the next video i will give you a live demo of how you can create our back how you can utilize our back custom role definition everything that we saw in this uh, theoretical video we will do it online in the ashur portal and if you have any questions uh, to let me know in the comment section you have more information on the slide go ahead and uh, read it click on this and check in my github repository as well also follow me on the github uh, and uh, share this with your friends i'll see you in the next interesting video thanks for watching if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos if you have any questions or suggestions leave them in the comments below happy coding